Okay, I want to switch back to something you were starting to bring up in in the last part. You know, the guarantee, as you were saying, it's there's guaranteed income, but there's other ways to shape it and other types of guarantees that you can have. It can be housing, it can be healthcare. Um, so for folks who haven't read the book, can you sort of just briefly note the range of guarantees uh, that you that you touch on? And then, you know, when we were talking before this um, before this conversation, you know, I was saying, so what do you think is the like most meaningful? And you kind of went right to housing. So maybe you could also say why you think that one is sort of like the fundamental bedrock one. Yeah. Um, you know, in the last few years, we've seen meaningful momentum on all seven. I trace seven in the book now. I'm not suggesting the guarantee economy is limited to those seven. I just found very meaningful um, progress on the seven guarantees that I that I tracked. So it's housing, it's the guarantee of income, healthcare, family care, uh, good work, college, and uh, an inheritance, also known um, colloquially as a baby bond. And yeah, you know, I live in California and um, my kid is 11. And over the last 11 years, we've seen the housing crisis explode in every uh, corner of our state. And I think we're seeing that in cities across this country. What used to be invisible um, poverty and insecurity is now widely visible in streets across this country. And so I do think housing is one of the most important ones. And it is something uh, that we've left entirely up to the private market for decades. And um, uh, there is a shift underfoot to uh, around that, that saying the market has failed us uh, in so many ways. And um, we're starting to see more um, argument toward a guarantee of housing. You know, I, I tracked Tara Raguvir in Kansas City, who uh, was a researcher actually with Matthew Desmond, and then um, started organizing tenants, built the Kansas City Tenants Union, and is now um, going to launch a federation of tenants unions around the country. And she was the first to articulate the homes guarantee being an umbrella that would hold so many of the um, different parts of housing, right? From evictions to rental assistance, to protecting renters, to affordability, right? It could all be wrapped up in um, the housing guarantee. And, you know, I think there are, there's really three parts to housing. One is to protect renters and tenants who are the most vulnerable in the housing market. But two is to produce more units, we just haven't built in this country market rate or affordable housing for decades. And so we need to be building more. And the third is to preserve the affordable housing, you know, that we do have um, in this country. And one place where we're starting to see kind of all of these uh, come together is in Montgomery County, Maryland. And uh, the housing authority in Montgomery County, Maryland has now built over a thousand units and there are thousands more planned that are kept permanently off the speculative market. They are for middle income Marylanders. They're built on the transit line, uh, one that they're going to break ground on, one building that they're gonna break ground on this month is actually a carbon neutral um, uh, building. And uh, it means that rent will be stable and people aren't kicked out of the units if they end up getting a better paying job, right? Or if uh, something happens uh, in their life and they lose their job, that, that the, the units are there and people can count on that housing. And housing authorities across the country are starting to take note of what's happening in Montgomery County, Maryland. So I, I leave that as one example of where we're starting to see the guarantee take shape. 